So basically, issues of social justice broadly conceived are increasingly at the core of many digital humanities projects uh, and, and teaching. Uh, there are more and more issues of ethics, privacy, copyright, um, at taking on greater and prominence, even with projects that don't self-identify as being in this space. And our paper today focuses on a new community-driven course. And at the end, I will have a plea. If you want to be involved, tell us, uh, on the Daria Teach platform on social justice in the digital humanities. Um, so part one is two working groups from Daria, the pan-European, I'm sure many of you know it, digital research infrastructure in the arts and the humanities. Uh, we're collaborating on this course. It's being hosted in Daria Teach, for those of you not familiar. It's an open access platform for course content. Most of the content has be, been created by people associated with uh, the original or second Daria Teach uh, consortium. But more recently, there are about five or six new projects that came in, um, and one's coming in in the summer from other consortia who are working and want to host their teaching content. A lot of courses, please go there if you're interested. The goal of the current course is twofold, to create a community-driven course focusing on work in this area and to really encourage future scholarship by highlighting, highlighting projects and processes through a series of case studies that are mostly written by the um, people who created the project, uh, augmented by theory and concepts. Um, I, I think a lot of the course are, is structured around issues of ethics, privacy, duty of care, particularly when working with indigenous marginalized people um, and minority, minoritized populations. So we began this course last summer and we invited colleagues to tell us about their research, um, both projects and theoretically informed research articles and we received 22 responses and this became the basis for the course. So this is just a taster of some of the case studies. We have about 25 at the moment that some of them are done, some of them are working on. But this is one of them, Walking the Archive of District, District 6 in Cape Town. And it's a collaboration between an engineer at the University of Cape Town and an archivist at the University of Michigan. And they describe an interdisciplinary project that uses new technologies to surface individual and community memories that were subjected to forced removal from District 6. And in turn, their project hopes to become a vehicle to advance social justice in the humanities around this forced removal. Um, it, and it's a fabulous project, and, and it's a really fabulous case study, I think. Another project that we're working on right now is the Canadian YEG Police Violence Archive. It was begun by a PhD candidate, and what it, its goal is to expose police violence through public records in the city of Edmonton. All of these have public presences. They're all, most, mostly all available on the web. And what we're doing is giving them a venue to maybe step back and theorize uh, the work in, in the frameworks we have. So we have um, an, another project that uh, the case study is finished. Um, and what we really wanted to do was reach out and have this co-constructed. So we didn't want to write all the case studies and then ask people, you know, is this what you meant by your project? So we're making visible maybe some projects that might be less visible or known only to certain communities. Um, and many of the goals of these projects to allow the voice of those um, of, of people to be heard, um, people who are typically silenced, as with the case of this American Prison Writing Project. We also have a case study on data feminism for our ethics section that Corica is, um, is uh, um, taking charge of. So within this framework of social justice, we're talking, taking a very embracive approach using the opportunity to explore and problematize the issues, understanding the theories, and the positioning surrounding the terms without trying to redefine them or get caught up in definitional debates. We have around 25 case studies from many places around the world, not all. Um, in my earlier session, there was um, um, some projects um, uh, from India um, and I asked them if they could recommend some projects, and I will have one from Australia after this, 
Paul Arthur is speaking, I think, in the next section. We're open to new case studies, so please, if you are doing research or know of someone, let us know. We're also conscious that we don't want to be gatekeepers. Um, we find projects as we can through the survey or through conferences, so it's not um, selection necessarily, but the ones that we can find and um, convince people to write case studies. Um, and we're also conscious of boundaries, disciplinary, global, methodological. So we're interested in including projects that investigate colonial entanglements within Europe, but also those in, within Europe itself, as in our, the case of Ireland or, for example, the, the Denmark-Greenland um, connection. So the project. This is a course outline. We'll have four units. Unit one that I've taken charge of is introduction to social justice in the unit uh, digital humanities, just be an introduction, with a series of case studies, both in teaching and in projects. The second one, that's Corica's, will focus on issues and challenges of doing ethical research in the digital humanities, as well as approaches to ethical decision making. So things like principles of social responsibility and engagement, of justice and fairness, and of transparency and accountability. Um, our colleague Marianne Hyung from Aarhus is taking charge of this third unit that is focusing on knowledge paradigms through border thinking and challenging the ways we teach and do research within a Western knowledge paradigm, which are inherent to most of our projects um, and to the curricula we teach. Uh, um, knowledge management systems and museums and libraries and this is something that um, the case studies and she will, through her writing, be, be interrogating. And the last but not least, and this is where Sina um, comes in, and Walter, but mostly Sina, because Walter has been working on this conference, is the toolbox. Um, and this is going to be a resource uh, for those who wish to conduct ethically aware um, research and maybe want a place to go to see what's out there. Um, so it's community degrees best practice. For example, we have ones working with children, working with indigenous people, providing examples of consent forms beyond what is required legally, that um, changes depending on where you live, around open access publishing, um, particularly when you're working with sensitive materials and showing awareness and disclaimers and commentaries. And that's me, Deb. If, if you have a case study, you know of someone, we have a really easy, uh, email address, please email us. We're open to new case studies. Thanks very much.